Welcome to Inside the Octagon. I'm John Gooden alongside top UFC analyst Dan Hardy. Another stack card awaits us in California and one of the prizes on offer is the UFC's middleweight gold. Luke Rockhold is the man in possession, winning in spectacular style against the previously unbeaten Chris Weidman. The sequel, though, will have to wait as Michael Bisping steps into the breach for a dream shot at the title. This is a sport full of surprises. Can the count spring one at UFC 199? The breakdown is coming up. So the new main event for UFC 199 is Luke Rockhold versus Michael Bisping. He is stepping in on two weeks' notice, but he said this was in his destiny. <laughs> he did. He finally gets that title shot. Let's take a look at how he measures up against the champion. They've obviously fought before much bigger Luke Rockhold mm. against the veteran Michael Bisping. Yeah, the, the height and reach, particularly the five-inch reach advantage, I have to say it looked like it played dividend in that first fight. Uh, Michael Bisping really is, is the volume striker. He likes to put you under a lot of pressure for as long as it takes, sometimes the five rounds if needs be. Whereas Rockhold's the kind of the layback, the weight, and the get the finish. And, uh, you know, 12 finishes, the most in UFC strike force history kind of reinforces that. But it's Bisping's experience that is going to be his advantage in this fight. Yeah. OK, well, I mentioned that they had fought before. Pretty good starting point for the analysis set. Yes, yeah. It makes sense to start there. Now, I think it's important to just give a, a very brief background of the, the drama going into that first fight. Michael Bisping had made a comment uh, after they'd sparred a few years previous when Rockhold was the strike force champion that yes. Bisping had gotten the better of him and that he I was the, the unofficial strike force yeah. champion. Obviously, Rockhold was a little offended by that, so this was a real statement for, for Rockhold. He said he was going to stop him in the first round. And, and I mean, he was, he was pretty close. He was pretty close, let's be honest. But the first few minutes, the thing that stood out to me was how Bisping was pushing forward and trying to land. And Rockhold was just refusing to engage. Michael Bisping's combinations were falling short, and he was starting to look a little panicked. So then the clash of heads happened 90 seconds in, and you can see Bisping's now distracted by this, communicating with the referee. Which is odd for a, such yeah. a seasoned professional to be distracted by something like that. It, it is, it is. It's a little bit a little bit concerning. We saw it again in the Anderson Silva fight in that third round, which I'll touch on in a second. So this this is a lesson for, for me, for Michael Bisping. This is a, Michael Bisping needs to be focused on the fight, completely ignore everything else that's going on, especially the third man in the octagon, and just focus on that particular fight. He just didn't seem to get back into the fight after the head, after the clash of heads, and that was really the issue, because the, the confidence that had been affected by those shots falling short was now greatly affected by the fact that he got a cut above his eye from a, from a okay. clash of heads. So then Rockhold starts to, you can see his confidence starting to grow as, the, as the, the minute's ticking down. He starts to program Michael Bisping to expect that kick to the body. So then Michael Bisping, you can see, starts checking it, he's adjusting, getting ready for that. Now, the pressure that Rockhold had put on himself to say he was going to get this finished in the first round, you can see in this last minute, he throws the head kick, which really is what he was looking for. So then when it comes into the second round and he didn't get it in the first, he fortunately managed to land that head kick and send Bisping to the canvas. Um, um, fair play to the count for getting back to his feet, but Rockhold latched onto that guillotine and bumped him over. Beautiful butterfly hook there. Let's just have Love a look at that. Sweet. And what's interesting about this, the, the co-main event on this on this event, UFC 199, is Dominic Cruz Uriah Faber. Their first fight also ended in a guillotine from Mount, which is, you know, it's quite unusual. It's an unusual yeah. submission anyway, especially to have the two fights at the top of this card both have their first yeah. fight end like this. One thing I just want you to pay attention to is this foot here. This is the butterfly hook that Luke Rockhold is going to use to elevate Michael Bisping. Really nice work. Elevates him right over and allows him to take a mount position, which you're going to see in a second. We hear Brian Stan talking about this is a very effective guard for mixed martial arts. Yes, And it this is. is one of the reasons why. Because you can create space with it. You can move yeah. your opponent around. And immediately a show of respect afterwards, Rockhold lifts him up off the canvas. Bisping tries to walk away. <laughs> and I think if Herb Dean wasn't there, he would have done. But there was a brief exchange of words. Rockhold says, I have a lot of respect for you. I mean, he's been around the game for a long time as yeah. Bisping. But the finish was really spectacular. Rockhold knew he had that locked in. He was able to take a hand off and post so he can really arch into that and get the finish. And that face just there, I've known Michael for a long time. That face just there is Michael realizing that he lost a fight he could have won and he's got to make some changes going into the next one. And now he's 3-0 three and three and oh in his last three fights. Yeah. And you've got to look at the guys he's beating. C CB Dolloway was on a roll. He also beat Talis Latis, who was on a roll, and the great Anderson Silva. So he's got a lot of good experience going into this rematch with Rockhold. Plus, he's also got that first round, and that's, that's got to be a confidence builder for him to know that he's already been in there. There aren't going to be any surprises. And if I can add to that, 
look on his face as well. He probably thought at that point, not going to get the title shot now. Yes, good point. So he's made a, a lot of ground up from there. Mm. Um, but staying with Luke Rockhold then and that spectacular finish, that is not the only highlight reel finish that we've seen. The scrambles, the finishes on the canvas mm. are sublime at times. They are, they are. He is predominantly a grappler. You know, if you, if you think of Luke Rockhold, you think, think he obviously... He started with jiu-jitsu, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, you think a tall, rangy guy that's a good kickboxer, most definitely is a good kickboxer. But the two tools that he uses, the <laughs> check right hook, and, and the left, left kick. kick sets it up, sets them into each one. It's exactly, lovely. it's perfect. But everything is around getting the fight to the floor, whether it's putting them under enough pressure to shoot, which we're going to see in a second in the Bosch fight, or obviously beating them up enough to the point where you can get the fight to the floor with strikes. So uh, Bosch initiated this takedown. He went for the single leg, and he ends up getting locked up in a, in a, a reverse triangle, which Rockhold never lets go of. The whole of the first round, pretty much, was, was Rockhold trying to separate this. And you can see the strength of Bosch. He drops his whole weight onto that elbow to try and lift the arm yeah, with his whole to body. Explode up Great across, technique, yeah. but still couldn't do it. He did a good job of getting this finish from, from Bosch. But this, this is what Rockhold's about. You know, he, he can put people under enough pressure just through his confidence alone on the feet. You can see it in the Machida fight, how he's moving forward. Confident, confident, comfortable. And this right hook as well is really important. We saw him use it in the Philippou fight, which we're going to touch on in a second. But in this situation here, where Machida had covered the distance very quickly, he actually, he actually came through the range of the right hook, which actually turned it into a, almost a throw to the floor. He actually kind of hooked him to the floor with it, and he used it in the Bisping fight as well. But the check, the check right hook is one of his best weapons. He throws it here, but as you can see, Machida's already inside. But he does send him to the canvas, which allows him to set immediately onto He's that. He's got good footwork, though, to allow to oh, yeah. kind of move his body out of the way so that 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 allowed Machida to follow through? Most definitely. Well, what, one thing that you'll see in the Philippou fight, and, and whenever he's setting up the counter right, is if you stand in, in your orthodox stance for me, as I'm a southpaw, most of the time you're going to be fighting to get that foot on the yeah. outside. We've discussed this before, but Rockhold puts his foot on the inside, so he has that, that pull back that as he whip, catches people yeah. moving forward. It works really well for him. But these two strikes, the right hook and the left kick, are the, the two strikes that he uses to set up everything else. Yeah. But when the fight goes to the floor, he's got a whole plethora of submissions he can throw at you. You can transition from one position to another. He's got good sweeps, good takedowns, really good top pressure. Look at that, that pressure yeah. driving down. We're going to see no a little bit more. Them. Nothing at all. And he, and he finds his way into these positions where he can tie up wrists and he can strike. And as people are starting to escape, he starts looking for the submission. He starts chasing that. But he's OK to just put you under pressure just to keep striking. And this was the second round. This is the second round. And look how tired Machida looks. He looks yeah. discouraged immediately. And now Rockhold's and starting to, as well. Exactly. And now Rockhold's starting to edge forward. He's starting to get confident. And it, here he's gonna it, Machida's gonna close the distance and Rockhold's gonna knock him down with a short back fist, jump straight onto his back, and then we're back into Rockhold's world. And this was just a progression of pressure, good strikes, uh, good ground control until Machida basically gave up. He didn't want to be in this fight anymore. You'll see it in the replay in a second. And Joe Rogan mentioned it as well. There was no resistance to this rear naked choke. Yeah, we can see. He's not looking to fight a grip at all. No, nothing. There was no hand, there was no neck fighting, no nothing. He didn't try and escape the position at all. He was broken. He was ready to be out of that fight. And that was just through those two strikes that, that uh, Rockhold uses, the right hook and the left kick, and just that confident pressure that he puts yeah. on people. And that's, in my opinion, what affected Bisping in that first fight. The Bisping that we saw, in, look at this, no resistance at all. No fight for the arm, nothing. He's just waiting to tap. That is that is a yeah. that is a, a strong um, a strong stance to be in for any champion to have that uh, that impact on somebody without actually using any technique to yeah. just beat them in the fight without beating them up. I mean, Bisping cannot give in to that. He's got to put that pressure on early if he's going to beat Rockhold. And it's interesting we've spoken about the peacocking of, of Conor McGregor, where he makes himself bigger. Mm, yeah. Uh, he verbalizes stuff. Luke Rockhold doesn't do that. No. It's not a facial expression thing. It's it's just. It's just the way he carries himself. It's a je ne sais quoi, isn't it? Is, it? There's it something is. there yeah. that, that he does to his opponents. Yeah, yeah. Michael Bisping, then. He's had a great 2015, 2016, obviously capped off with that win over Anderson Silva, greatest of all time. Mm. We were there. Fantastic. 
Let's have a look at what he's accomplished in the last couple of years then. Okay, well... Because he's a changed man he in is. many ways. He is. He has this laser focus now. Yeah, he, and I think he got that from the Rockhold fight personally. I think there okay. was a change in his in his behaviour after that fight, especially now he knows that this is this is last chance saloon for the title. You know, he, if he doesn't get get the, get the fight, get the, the title in this fight, he's probably not going to get within reach of it again. Well, results speak volumes. Exactly, and, he, and you know, he's fighting Rockhold again. He gets some payback, he gets, another, he gets a shot at the belt. It's a good situation to be in. So let's talk about Michael Bisping, a general skill set. We've broken him down a few times before. You know what you're getting with Michael Bisping. It's a high output, it's a high work rate, and a lot of strikes landed. But it's this in and out striking style that he's really good at. His ability to cover distance and land good clean punches and then get out of the way before anything comes back. You really like this fight, don't you? I think it's his best performance, honestly. I think Alan Belcher is a good striker, and I think this is a good performance as well. But in the Alan Belcher fight, he just stayed out of range a lot more against the guy that was on an even par at the time. Time. Whereas Kung Lee, in my opinion, obviously is on his way out a little bit. But this was a statement for Bisping's conditioning. This was a, an accumulation of all the work he'd done over four rounds. But the Michael Bisping that fought Anderson Silva, in my opinion, looked like an entire different fighter. Yeah. And I think there was a change in the Rockhold fight. If you look at the, the expression on Michael Bisping's face here, the focus in the Anderson Silva fight, he, 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 had, he had no concern about getting caught with a shot. He was putting a lot of pressure on him from the first bell. And this is interesting, this is important. We talked about the counter right hook of Luke Rockhold. Let's talk about this here. So you can see Anderson Silva's body weight leaning back. Yeah. You can see he's preparing to throw this right hook. He's leaning his weight onto his back leg and he's going to try and pull that right hook this into the side. This is a picture of Rockhold. We should, <laughs> we should almost overlay him at this point. Exactly, and we could from the Philippou fight. We could almost, almost take his, his posture exactly. So as this plays on here, you'll see Michael Bisping throw a long left hook and the right hook goes right over the top of him. It, it's, it's, it's a slightly shorter punch, but he catches him on the inside, and then from that point on, he's, he's able to land a couple more clean shots. He throws another right hand and then a short left hook that puts Anderson Silva on the yeah. floor. He's got to get inside that right hand. That's important. That five-inch yes, reach as well. Exactly. He doesn't want to be standing on the end of that. So, I mean, b beautifully put timed and placed just there, but it's that short right hook. It's that confidence that allowed him to step in after that first shot to land two more. But then we're into the third round, and Anderson Silva's now putting pressure on Michael Bisping, and you saw his mouthpiece come out, and immediately his, his yarn starts to come apart. You know, he starts, to, he starts to get distracted by the referee, I need my mouthpiece, and this and that. And I just don't understand this, though. I from don't either. such a seasoned veteran. Yeah, I don't either. We saw it in the Rockhold fight, and, and we saw it again in the Anderson Silva fight, and I'm hoping that this knee in the third round is the lesson that he needed to learn to make sure that when he goes into this next fight against Rockhold, see, here's Herb Dean picking the mouthpiece up now. And Michael Bisping is going to continue to circle away until he gets caught against the fence with Anderson Silva again. He breaks the clinch and immediately his attention goes over to Herb Dean again. And Anderson Silva jumps in with that knee. Yeah. But fair play to him, Anderson Silva walks off and starts to, starts to celebrate. And Herb Dean controls the situation, restarts the next, the next round, the, 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 the fourth round. And Michael Bisping goes back to his game plan and gets back into his rhythm that he was in the first and second round. And we do need to celebrate that for a minute because we, do. we don't need to question his heart or his will desire. No. But to come back from that and then finish the fight the way that he did yeah. was absolutely phenomenal. He won the first two rounds quite comfortably. The third round was a difficult one, but then he came back and that this is the third this is the fourth round now. Back putting Anderson Silver under pressure keeping him on the back foot, a confident Michael Bisping in front of a hometown crowd. This yeah. has got to have added something to his game. And to be able to do this to Anderson Silva, to know that his game plan that he put into effect came into play, he got the victory that he wanted, and you can see the relief on his face. And in the post-fight interview, he you can see how overwhelmed with emotion he was. I mean, this was a fight he'd been preparing for for five years, and to go into the title fight now knowing you've already beaten Anderson Silva, you've already beaten the greatest middleweight of all time, has got to add another layer to his game. It's got to give him confidence against Rockhold in this rematch. Yeah, he never looked intimidated by Anderson Silva. No. Despite having that target on his back for so many years. Mm. OK, well, on to the champion then, and we've been talking about his striking, how he sets it up, yeah, the check hook yep. and then the kicks. Yep. What have you got to show us? Well, the first one, the obvious one, is the Costas Philippou fight. We see both of the uh, of the elements that I want to talk about here. You can see this is what we were talking about with the Anderson Silva, the dropping back, the preparing this right hook for the counter as Philippou is moving forward onto it, and it works really well here. You can see Philippou's pressure in. He drops back, and there's the counter right hook, and immediately puts him under pressure straight afterwards. That he only used it one time in this fight, though, and then as the fight progressed. 
it was much more about the kick and he throws this nice head kick that does some damage to Filippo and he recognises it, acknowledges that, so then he starts to try and put some pressure on, on Rockhold because he knows that he's already, he's already cut. And then Rockhold again, as, as he did in the Bisping fight, starts to programme him with that midsection body kick. Really nice timing on this, drops him with the body kick, the second one. And I just want to talk about this, we've, we've discussed it one time before, so here's the kick coming. We're looking at this left kick and we're looking at this target here. But the first time he throws it, it's going to hit the, it's going to hit the arm of Philippou. It's a good block. But what it does do is it serves a purpose in getting Philippou to move back away from the, kick, from the, the left kick of Rockhold. So as the fight plays on, you see Philippou moving in that direction. The kick lands, he moves away. Now Rockhold steps across here. You see this front foot has already stepped across. He's cut this angle off on yes. this side and he's throwing his right jab to the side of Philippou's face. It's not just movement, he's got an offensive weapon to send his opponent back the this other way. This is it, this is it. I mean, he could have stepped there, but it wouldn't have been nearly as effective without, sure. without the jab. What it also does is it keeps him at kicking range, so then as Philippou starts to move back in this direction, he can sweep this left leg up. It's a long range with his physical size as well. Yes, exactly. So then he lands that, Philippou starts to move back, Limit and shot. bang, beautiful. And you can see straight away the, the look on Philippou's face, Shut that down. fight was done. Great stoppage by Herb Dean and he walks off. And then we're into the title fight. So he won a few fights in this in this in the meantime. He 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 got some great performances, obviously the Michael Bisping fight, the Lyoto Machida fight, yes. which we get a, a great performance again over someone that Rockhold had looked up to, had respected as a as a real formidable test. So he loses the first four and a half minutes of the title fight. He looked quite relaxed about it. He didn't seem too concerned. He, almost like he was planning on giving away that round anyway. But as he got back to his feet in the last 30, 35 seconds, he goes back to his kicking game. And look at the reaction he gets from, from Weidman when he starts to thunder these kicks in. Weidman realises the danger. He level changes and he goes straight in for the takedown. But Rockhold wraps up that guillotine and takes top position straight away. And this is the threat of the Rockhold ground game. That this is sweep again, by the way. Exactly. It's Beautiful. It's that elevation of that, yeah. that butterfly hook. But now there's that threat of the ground game. Weidman's going to start to contest a little bit on the feet, which plays into Rockhold's game. Just as before I play this, keep an eye out for the check left, the, the check right hook. Weidman closes the distance on this one, but it's still effective. It still knocks him to the canvas. As he steps in, it's coming here. Bang! Catches him on the side of the head and knocks him down. It doesn't hurt him, but it sets up this flurry that follows. He opens his body nicely so that he allows his opponents to go past him. Yeah, yeah, Off most into definitely. Off the fence where he can and close the distance. And down to his footwork as well. But now Weidman's under pressure. Now Weidman's backing up and Rockhold's getting confident. He starts to close this distance. You can see he starts to stand closer to his opponent when his confidence grows. And these body kicks. Now, whether they're hitting you in the ribs or on the forearm, they're doing damage. They're hurting. Everyone knows they're coming. <laughs> But nothing there's nothing you can do about it. No. And with someone who's six foot four, he can kick you from across the side of the octagon yeah. as well. You know, he's, he's a big dude. He's not, you know, he's not a small athlete by any, by any means. So then he starts to wear, wear Weidman down, and Weidman goes for that crazy wheel kick, yeah. which to me looked like a bit of a desperation move. And he finds himself in this position where Rockhold is really at his best. In the top position, landing some good clean shots. We get into the fourth round. I'm not, sh not sure how he survived it. I personally, I think I would have stopped it myself. But then we're in this situation again where Rockhold's putting him under pressure. We talked about this before, we've talked about this downward pressure. So Rockhold's shoulder is driving down into the head of Weidman now. He's and he's passed him. his leg to the other side so that he can get even more pressure on that, that left shoulder. There you go. And another thing that's worth noting as well is that not only is this, is this pinning of the head very effective to keep your opponent in place, but it immobilizes their upper body. So as this, as this uh, fight progresses, you can see Weidman's trying to fight, trying to get his guard back, but his top, body, his top body's immobilized, his shoulders are pinned, his head's pinned, so yeah. that allows Rockhold just to walk through his guard, just to pass with a very little resistance from, from the bottom part of, of Weidman's body. And open for strikes. And here comes the finish, he's in quarter guard, he's not too bad, he's landing good clean shots. And look at that relief on his face, he's finally made it to the, finally crossed that last hurdle and he beat Weidman, the guy that everybody thought was going to hold the belt for a long time. So this is where he's at now. He's got that belt around his waist. He's yes. not defended it one time yet. He was hoping to defend against Weidman, and unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So he gets to fight his old rival again, Michael Bisping. It's, it's going to be an interesting title defense because it's not the person that he was planning on fighting. And Bisping's a very different striker, a very different fighter to, to Chris Weidman. Talking of interest, we've had a little bit of interest on social media. OK. Let's see what the world is saying. Thanks, everyone, for sending their questions across. Let's see what Will has to say. With only having two weeks notice, will Bisping be five round fit? If not, what should be his game plan? 
I'm glad you asked that question because that was the first question that I asked as well. And Bisping almost answered it for me. There was an interview he did recently where he said he knows that he's not going to have the five-round cardio because he's not been doing it's a full... It's interesting for him to concede yeah, that. Yeah, but I, I still don't think it's the case. I think Bisping's five-round title fight cardio is the same as, you know, as anybody else with a full training camp. Okay. He's just a naturally good athlete. He's yeah. in, good, in good shape all year round. He trains all year round. But these, you know, the, these couple of weeks that he's taken this fight on has changed his perspective to the fight. He said that he wants to go back to the way he used to fight, which is much more of an animalistic style. Now, my memory of Michael Bisping back in the day when we used to share Cage Warriors cards is that he was 20% kickboxer, 80% berserker. I mean, he was just a <laughs> wild man. He would, just, he would put you under so much pressure that people would break. They would yeah. cover up. So that's what I've done. I've pulled a couple of these fights. Now, if Michael knows he's not got five rounds, or at least he thinks he's not got five rounds in the tank, those first two rounds could be very important for him because he's going to be able to put a lot of pressure into Rockhold. And if that can, if that can work out for him, he can take, take this title away. I mean, it, it's not inconceivable. Michael Bisping will tell you that himself. So let's go back and let's look at a couple of Cage Warriors fights. Now, this is obviously Michael Bisping walking out. He looks like a lot. He looks a lot different in, in these fights. He was nine and zero at the time. Is he not a light heavyweight back in these he days? He was a light well? heavyweight. He was a very aggressive light heavyweight as well. This was uh, Mika Mehmet on uh, Cage Warriors Strike Force Two. But this again, a first round TKO. Just that forward pressure, that heavy momentum that he puts on people. That he seems to have lost a little bit in, in his UFC career. He holds back against Ross Point, and this was his last fight before the Ultimate Fighter house. You can see how in, in, this, in his opponent's face he is. Now this looks like Michael Bisping who fought Anderson Silva. Pushing him against the fence, standing in his range yeah. and hitting him and moving his head out of the way. That's the Michael Bisping we need to see in this fight and I think that's what he's talking about. He knows he has this within him and if he can draw on this for the, for the Rockhold fight, the rematch, not only does it put him in a good chance of landing a good clean shot on Rockhold that could change the fight, but it's also going to be a fighter that, that Luke Rockhold is not preparing for. Luke Rockhold's preparing for the Michael Bisping he fought the first time. And this is a very different fighter. So that's another element you could bring to this fight. So you don't think it's all about taking Rockhold to the deep waters for Michael Bisping? I don't think it is. No, I don't think it is. I think, I think Michael Bisping loses the fight at a distance kickboxing range. I think, I think he wins the fight by getting inside and by roughing him up. The first round of the Rockhold-Weidman fight, Rockhold lost the, lost the round because he was under too much pressure. Weidman was right in his face for the whole fight, dragging him down to the floor. Now, I'm not saying that Michael should grapple with him, but that mentality, that, that, that embracing the grind, that pressure yeah. that people like to put on early on, is what Michael Bisping has to do in this fight. Okay, so he's got to go to war inside the distance. Got to. Early on. Early on. <laughs> okay, well, there's plenty more to look out for at UFC 199. Let's take a look at the card then. And as we see, kicking off with Benil Darius versus James Vick, I really like that lightweight bout, but there's so much more to look forward to as well. Yeah, all four of those fights are really dynamic. But Poirier Green, Bobby Green's a really difficult fighter to, to, to compete against. He's very unorthodox, very confident. And obviously, Dustin Poirier is one of the best in the division, so I'm really excited about that. It should be an all-striking affair, in my opinion. Great card, though. Really good fights. Yeah, that's all from us. So much to look forward to at UFC 199. And on that note, Dan and I will be back with episode two as we look ahead to the Dominic Cruz Uriah Faber matchup for Bantamweight title honors. Plus, we have a very special bonus edition as we catch up with the man himself, Michael Bisbing. So please look out for that. And to register your support as Michael Bisbing attempts to bring home a very first UFC gold to English shores, please use the hashtag BackBisbing. Keep your feedback flowing. All comments are appreciated. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you again soon.